In today's podcast, we'll start to discuss periodic trends. We'll talk about effective nuclear charge in this video. And this is absolutely important that you understand this one before moving on to any of the other ones. I know there's a lot of videos to watch today, but this one is the most important. We'll start with a short bit of history today so that we can have some background in the development of the periodic table before moving on to learning about effective nuclear charge. And then before moving on to the rest of the periodic trends, you must understand this one because all the other ones are kind of building on this concept. This is the reasoning behind most of the other periodic trends. Originally, when scientists were finding elements, they were just writing down these tables of elements and their masses. John Newlands noticed that every eight elements, the, electro the elements had similar properties, at least up through calcium. So then Mendeleev and Meyer designed a periodic table that was based off John Newland's observations. This was able to predict the discovery of new elements that had similar properties to those already known because they were able to see where there was missing pieces of the puzzle. There were still problems with it though. For example, since it was arranged by mass, argon and potassium would have actually been switched from the periodic table that we know today. This makes no sense based on similar properties. We know that argon and potassium do not have similar properties with those that it would be underneath for masses. So along came a guy, came a guy named Mosley who figured out that actually it should have been designed based on atomic number rather than mass. So the table was rearranged based on this to give us the periodic table that we know today. After the elements were arranged by atomic mass, we got a relatively modern version of the periodic table, which was able to predict where the missing elements would fall and the properties of them. In your previous chemistry classes, you probably discussed that elements within a group have similar properties due to the same number of valence electrons. But now we can talk about other trends that come from the periodic table as well. Here is a summary of all the periodic trends. This way, you have them all ahead of time, and you can go back and visit this table whenever you want. Just be sure that you don't simply memorize them. You need to know the reasoning behind each and explain them. If I ever ask you why a trend is, the answer is never, ever, ever because the trend says so. Yes, this is true, but there is a logical, physical reasoning behind it that you need to know. So this is simply so that you have a roadmap to what we're going to cover in the next several videos. First, we'll start with effective nuclear charge, since this is the basic reason for most of the other trends when it comes to the horizontal principles, at least. It increases as you go across the periodic table to the right. This is the strength of the pull that the electron feels from the nucleus. As we increase the number of protons without increasing the amount of shells, the electron feels more of a pull. Think about two magnets attracting each other. If you increase the strength of the magnets, similarly to adding more electrons and protons, you increase the strength of the force pulling them together. We're not going to talk about the vertical trends here because each shell will actually have a different effective nuclear charge, and so it's a little bit odd to talk about that trend. And this is your reasoning behind many of your other trends, so make sure you understand this one really well. Let's remind you about shielding, which we talked about a few videos ago. This is an extremely important topic when we start discussing periodic trends. Let's look at our analogy again to help make the definition more memorable. We discussed using a concert to make an analogy when describing shielding and penetration. The further back in a concert that you are, the more shielded from the stage you are. Effective nuclear charge could be analyzed with this too by how good the concert is. A concert with a well-known platinum recording artist is going to hold more even if those people are further back than say a local band that nobody has heard of. So perhaps you're at a local small fair, um, assuming that we're not in Orange County, we're, we're at a normal place that can't quite afford platinum selling artists at their small local events, and you're way back here. This is probably not a super good concert, and so being way back here is probably not going to hold you. That's a small effective nuclear charge. But now, let's say you have this awesome, amazing band. You might be okay with being way back here, because even though you're way back here, this is a great pull for you. That's a large effective nuclear charge.
Here, I ask you to explain the difference in effective nuclear charge between carbon and fluorine. Of course, we can simply use the periodic trend to decide that fluorine has a higher effective nuclear charge than carbon, but we need to fully understand why this is. Simply saying the trend goes left to right would not be the correct answer. So carbon has six protons and six electrons, giving it an electron configuration of 2s2, 2p2. Meanwhile, fluorine has nine protons and nine electrons, giving it a valence electron configuration of 2s2, 2p5. These have the exact same number of energy shells. They both go up to the n equals two level. So they have the exact same amount of shielding. However, fluorine has many more protons in its nuclei. And so therefore, it's able to pull those electrons in much tighter giving it a much higher effective nuclear charge. So now we've talked about some history of the periodic table development, along with reminding you about shielding. We've talked about how this relates to effective nuclear charge, and in later videos, we'll now talk about how all the rest of the periodic trends play off these concepts of shielding, penetration, and effective nuclear charge.